My great great grandfather married into the Kelleher family and they lived one door down from the bar. He bought land off them and then built the bar up here to, that we have today. It opened in 1899 and Tom Mack handed it on to Dick Mack and then the name went above the door. Dick Mack would be my grandfather. He took on the bar and ran it up until 1992 when he died. And he actually worked behind the bar in a wheelchair for near the end of that time. Um, he would have been a, a tough character. He ran a tight ship and really would have been known for being a good operator. I really to try and carry on what Dick Mack did, you know, run a tight ship and make sure people are looked after when they come in the door. I run the bar for my uncle, a guy called Oliver Mack, and we haven't changed it at all. We have a bar in one half and a leather shop on the other half where we do belt making, keyring making, if you want a dog collar, anything at all, we'll have a go. And that would have been the way it operated from, from day one. Out the back you had a little farm and you had a shed out here where we now have our brewery. Back in the day it would have been a cow shed and a glorified bottling plant where we bottled our own beer. But today we have brand new shiny beer equipment in there and we're making beer. The brewery came into my mind back in 2014. We're now in 2018 and we're only in our fourth month of operation. The initial idea came from the fact that we bottled our own beer. And I knew that and in the back of my mind, every now and again it'd pop in or people would come in and they'd, they'd look for a local beer. I'd be like, God, you know, we actually really had a local beer. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to, to bring that back? And fortunately, I met two other people who were involved in the project who had a passion for beer. And we would got chatting one night over beer. Another beer came and the idea got grander. A lot of planning went into it. We traveled around Ireland, England. We went everywhere trying to figure out at what level should we go into brewing, making beer? Do we go really micro and keep it compact or do we go huge? And by the end of 2014, we come together with the goal of not only bottling beer, but making our own beer with our own well water and keeping it really compact, keeping it to the bar to begin with above. And then if people liked it to, to go a bit further out around the town, which fortunately we are, we've grown a lot quicker than we planned and you can find our beer around town now. And, but that, it will be a Dingle beer. That will be it. It won't go any further than, than Dingle. Um, we've accelerated much faster than anybody here imagines. We've already expanded. Uh, within the first year, we've increased our capacity by 266%. So that was a huge acceleration, um, what, we've, what we did. Um, and we installed just more tanks. When we were looking into what type of beer to make, we wanted to, we were very aware of our market, our target market. Um, here in Ireland, people are relatively new to craft beer or micro-brewed beer. Well, I would have been brought up in a, a diet of general beer, bland, if you want to call it that. People now are becoming more aware of, you know, different beer, how people are, how people make beer, the passion behind it. Um, and local, people are really getting into the fact that, yeah, if there are people making beer locally, we should check it out. From a bar point of view, I want people to, to drink our beer and be able to have a couple of them. And when I told that to the other people involved and Graham Murray, our brewer, he went, okay, that'll be a challenge. You know, we've got a good selection range already covering the styles. And I, I believe that there's a beer for everybody. So I have people coming here and they tell me they don't drink beer. Uh, I tell them they haven't drank the right beer for them. First up, we have uh, your amber ale. It has a beautiful kind of sunset color. And what distinguishes between the red ale, which most people would have went for, um, which is a tr traditional in Ireland to have an Irish red ale, um, to go against that was that um, I find the amber ale is just a bit more palatable. It's uh, more caramel. Um, and a bit more maltiness and it's a bit more interesting in ingredients and flavor. And we have the Session IPA. It's an American style IPA where it's dry, you know, uh, you have moderate bitterness 
and uh, you know lovely fruity flavors and popping aroma um, and it's nice clean malts so it's all about the hops in that beer so that's our session IPA and then we have the coffee stout uh, I asked Justin from Bean and Dingle down the road could he do a cold infusion coffee and he says oh yeah okay I'll, yeah I'll, I'll give it a go and what that does to the coffee is it brings a much smoother gentler flavor and then I specially selected grain from Belgium um, for the smoothest chocolatey coffee flavors um, and then we blend it in at zero, zero degrees um, so it's a cold infusion uh, coffee stout um, which keeps it lovely and smooth and lots of chocolate and coffee flavor you have to brew for the people um, so the people kind of create the beer and the brewer then makes the beer for the people and for me that's the best beer you can brew it's not about your personal opinion on what beer is the best um, it's about what beer is the best for everybody and for, that's the best beer for me uh, and that's what how I design these beers going towards the future it's more about uh, sustainability um, rather than trying to go bigger and better uh, we're all tr always trying to be better we're always trying to make the best beer we can the best quality we can and the most consistent we can do that and also bring out as much new and interesting exciting beers as possible which we will be doing um, along the lines of expanding and going further out of field we're not looking towards that we want to stay in dingle we want to stay exclusive to dingle and for me that is more sustainable i love working here every day and i kind of want to hold on to it and be here forever in a way and enjoy every day but I can't wait to get a bit older and look back and go okay we had a good go at it you know the pub we maintained the pub and carried that on from my grandfather and my uncle even further back my great-grandfather and in the middle of all that we opened up a brewery with a few other people and made a go of it and we'll hopefully be able to hand that on I can't wait to look back. Um, we're confident that if we keep our head down, keep looking after people and give them a good product, be it in the bar or in the brewery, that it will work. You know, we're in a town where people come to meet people and if we can look after them, then I think they'll keep coming back. Local people are supporting you because you're helping them as well. And for me, that that's what a sustainable successful business is about and I think we will we will really do that here um, we're already doing it um, and we need to keep that consistent and sustain it and and that's the goal you have to work loads you know and together you can talk to each other and if you have a problem you'll get through it really about taking a deep breath and, and going for it and looking back I don't know how I've been here for a long time and I don't know how often I went, oh, I'll do that or I'll do that, and I never did. But with the brewery, there were other people involved and every now and again, we'd kind of get afraid or whatever, or go, okay, we can't manage that, and we'd begin to back out. But then you talk to each other and go, oh, you know what, we can do it, and go for it, really, you know? Whether you do it on your own or with other people, kind of up to you, but really kind of go for it. <laughs>